uh, we will start talking about the uh, tool within the accord uh, digital building uh, permit project um, today we will be talking about the uh, ai reft uh, tool uh, which is an ai powered rule formalization tool this tool is part of the output for the Accord WP2, uh, which focuses on the uh, sem semantization of regulation and open format uh, for machine readable rules. Uh, I will be presenting on behalf of the uh, research team for BCU. So uh, the outline for our presentation uh, will be targeting these uh, questions. What is the aim of the AI ref tool? within the ACWID project, and how uh, our AI and NLP natural language processing techniques are deployed uh, in, rule form in rule formalization, what are the use cases for AI REFT, to whom AI REFT can be useful. So the general aim of the, uh, of the, of the ACWID project is to digitalize building codes, regulations, and construction standards for compliance requirements. Within this framework, the uh, tool aim is to extract and analyze compliance uh, requirements from natural language text through uh, AI-assisted models and a semantic web technology. Uh, this is because the building codes and regulations often involve uh, complex language and technical jargon that can be difficult to understand and apply in practice. Uh, hence, our uh, tool uh, is the objective of the tool is to convert the regulatory information typically written uh, in a written text into a stu structured or standardized uh, representation that computers or machines can readily understand and process. Uh, so the regulation documents through our tool uh, are transformed into machine readable uh, data and machine executable data. Uh, who can use these, uh, out, the output of our tool? Uh, government bodies responsible for generating building codes, regulations in, Europe, in European countries, any institution or experts handling uh, building regulation data, researchers, uh, and um, the architecture, engineering, and construction, or AEC, community in general. Uh, the tool has, can be applied to several use cases, like in, uh, in the countries involved. For example, uh, in uh, one use case, um, the tool can be used to automate the compliance checking uh, of selected geometry-based requirements uh, of fire safety for schools, for example. Another use case is uh, to extract requirements of accessibility for schools. Uh, another use case is to develop and test a method for carbon footprint, for example to evaluate that uh, for the building uh, permission. Uh, now we will talk a little bit about the methodology uh, behind the tool that we have constructed. So the tool covers the entire formalization process from uploading a PDF file uh, of a regulation by the user to obtaining the result through a resource description framework, or what we call an RDF graph, uh, which is published to an external rules database, database as a machine executable uh, regulation. Uh, the tool integrates the following components, uh, a building compliance ontology, a building compliance rule language, or BCRL language, and a building smart data dictionary, BSDD. The tool also comprises both a manual and an automated annotation uh, process using natural language processing techniques and LP techniques used for both information extraction and rule generalization from the textual data of the regulatory document provided by the user. The tool provides both manual and automatic rule form formalization capabilities. Uh, the different stages involved uh, are um, uh, for the manual are the construction context extraction. Uh, the regulation to be considered uh, at the beginning is manually transformed into a spreadsheet based uh, format that can then be uh, automatically parsed to produce the manual digitization methodology. And then we have one of the major step, steps is the RAISE application. Uh, this step is one of the most important parts of the tool. It relates to the identification of clauses, paragraphs, and individual words and phrases in the regulatory text, as well as the detection of the logical relationships between them. And the tool can do this both manually and automatically. 
In this stage, the tool also performs what we call the raise annotation scheme for the regulatory textual data. Uh, the raise scheme is explained further in the next slide. And then we move on to the extraction authoring step. Uh, this step uh, will formalize the extraction of individual logical uh, decisions between uh, entities in the regulatory text. And then we have the BSDD mapping. Uh, this is basically the mapping of annotated data to uh, the building smart data dictionary, where terms are, are identified in the previous steps of the methodology will be mapped to uh, terms within uh, the BSDD. Uh, to talk a little bit about the RAISE application, what is RAISE application? RAISE uh, is a widely recognized approach in AEC. Uh, it mainly transforms regulatory or normative text into well-defined logical rules to facilitate automated compliance checking um, uh, process. The RAISE scheme is based <clears throat> uh, excuse me, on four operators. Uh, one, uh, requirements. Two, applicability, three, selection, and uh, four, uh, exception. Uh, this is why we call it raise. So requirements uh, refer to the checks that need to be satisfied. Uh, the applicability identifies to which or under which circumstance the check should be applied. Uh, selection defines more the scope of the check, and exceptions describe when the check should be excluded. So the result uh, of this will be a document uh, as you can see here in the graph, uh, that has a series of colors applied to it uh, using the raised colors as shown in the, uh, in the, in the figure. So uh, what we have is that we change the colors of the text in the regulatory uh, building document based on uh, these four uh, operators. And to the best of our knowledge, RAISE has primarily been, been, been employed uh, manually uh, by domain experts uh, uh, as a markup language to annotate regulatory text. Uh, our tool, on the other hand, uncovers the RAISE logic uh, implied within regulatory text documents and transforms it transforms it into um, a machine processable format. And this is done by our tool both automatically and manually. So um, at the beginning, the manual methodology uh, refers to the translation of the various non-machine readable documents that contain the target, the target regulation of the ACUD project into a machine readable form. To do this, a spreadsheet template is developed and the contents of the regulation is transformed into this template that we can see on the top right. Then the machine readable format uh, output is a YAML file. YAML is a machine readable data ser serialization language. This manual methodology uh, is, integrated, actually, is integrated in the tool uh, to make it easier for uh, the user <coughs> to, uh, uh, to transform the document into um, YAML files. So we have a user interface where, whereby the user is able to identify and mark up the clauses uh, in the text that contain regulations, identify uh, and mark up complex terms, annotate the logical relationship between uh, the items uh, based on the RAISE scheme. Uh, now we move on to the automatic methodology, and in the automatic methodology, we have two stages. The first stage is using NLP for information extraction uh, for the information extraction mechanism <clears throat> from uh, um, uh, and sentences in the regulatory documents. So this is the pipeline. This graph shows the pipeline of information information extraction, uh, which converts a regulatory sentence into a knowledge graph. So the output is um, a knowledge graph that we can see here. Uh, and um, uh, the uh, input um, is, as I said, is a regulatory sentence and the output is a knowledge graph. So the information extraction pipeline primarily aims at producing an entity relation graph uh, which enca encapsulates the information expressed in a regulatory sentence, which is the input of our pipeline. So the pipeline comprises four integral parts. Uh, one, uh, we have an, an entity classifier. Two, uh, we have uh, entity pairer. <clears throat> uh, three, we have a relation classifier. And four, we have a graph builder. Uh, 
Uh, the entity and uh, relation classifiers are uh, basically machine learning models where we utilize state-of-the-art uh, transformer-based architectures to extract entities and relations from the, regula from the regulatory centers. Uh, the relation classification identifies the relationships between these entities, and the entity pairer and graph builder act as connecting components. Specifically, the entity uh, pairer uh, translates the outputs generated by the entity classifier into uh, the input format required by the relation classifier, and the graph builder transforms the predictions of the relation classifier into the final uh, knowledge graph, which is the output of this stage. Now we, here, we have an example here of how we turn automatically we turn uh, a regulatory sentence in um, a building document into um, a knowledge graph. So uh, knowledge graphs are automatically generated by this pipeline. We can see here the in refers to the, uh, the input sentence and out denotes the uh, output knowledge graph. So for example, we have um, uh, this sentence uh, perimeter should uh, be continuous and have a minimum thickness of 25 um, millimeter. So you can see here that it identifies the objects, it identifies the relationship between the properties of the object, and this is all done uh, at the end of the information extraction uh, pipeline. Uh, the second stage uh, in the automatic methodology is the what we call the raise automation. Uh, we automatically transform textual descriptions of building regulations into structured uh, YAML format annotated with the raised labels that we explained earlier. We do this by fine-tuning and prompting both open source and commercial large language models. And these are some of the large language models that we have used in our methodology. So this is the pipeline of turning uh, a document regulation to a raise annotated YAML uh, automatically. So what we do is that we train a model and, and the training uh, of the tool, which is the back end, the, the model is the back end of the tool. The training of the tool primar primarily operates by taking both uh, the row text that we can see here. Uh, uh, we, we take row text blocks of the building regulations and the raise annotated YAML counterpart. Uh, data, which is created uh, at the manual stage of our methodology. We take these as input <clears throat> to uh, the uh, training uh, methodology, and then along with uh, prompt instructions to the large language model, we uh, create similar raise annotated uh, YAMLs from unseen uh, data from unseen uh, examples of text regulations. So we use two types of prompt engineering. Uh, we prompt the LLMs with two types of prompt engineering methods. Uh, the first one is the fine tuning, and the second one is few shot prompting. Uh, few shot learning is a technique whereby we prompt the LLM with several concrete examples of task performance. Uh, in our case, examples of raised annotated YAML files created from unstructured text regulations. Uh, as for the fine-tuning prompting or the fine-tuning, on the other hand, is a technique uh, whereby we take uh, an off-the-shelf open source uh, or property uh, model, retrain it on a variety of concrete examples, and save the updated weights uh, of the model as a new model. Then we use this fine-tuned model to create YAML files from unseen uh, uh, regulatory texts. So this is an example of the raise automation output. So the model takes this fire safety design for school um, uh, block of, uh, of, of instructions or regulations, and the model automatically defines the paragraphs uh, in the text regulation uh, and automatically builds the file with raise annotations, which reflect, reflect if you can see here, uh, they reflect the uh, logical relationships between the entities in the paragraph. Uh, our best model, which was the back end of our tool, uh, is a fine-tuned GPT-4 model achieving uh, around 81% accuracy. Now we come to the tool interface. We'll just give a snapshot of some uh, of the tool's capabilities. So the tool uh, has been implemented uh, as a web application where uh, users can register and create projects for each regulation to be transformed into a machine processable format. Uh, the usual data such as name and surname, email address, uh, etc., are, requ are requested from the user during the registration uh, stage. 
uh, once the regulatory document has been uh, uploaded uh, in PDF format, um, the tool offers uh, uh, the user two options. So they can annotate the text either uh, automatically or manually using the uh, requirement application uh, selection uh, exception method, which is the raise method. method. They can do this from scratch or automatically we will propose the annotation uh, already made on the text. If the user selects the manual option, the tool provides a view of the document, as we can see here on the left hand side. And as the user begins to select parts of uh, the text to apply the RAISE methodology, the original uh, formatting is placed uh, with the new RAISE formatting on the right hand side. The interface uh, provides eight buttons uh, to annotate the regulatory text using the RAISE uh, method, as you can see here, these uh, at, the, at, the, at the top. So there are four buttons to define. There are also four buttons to define clauses, subclauses, according to whether they refer to requirement, application, selection, or exception. Uh, then there are four more buttons to select parts of the text based on uh, these same categories, also to define the object, uh, properties of the object, references to other parts of the uh, text of the regulation, or, uh, or to another uh, document. Once the user is sure that the text is correctly tagged according to the, to the RAISE method, the next step is to validate it according to uh, the building compliance rule language and its definitions, and which is also provided to the user. And then once the user has validated the results, the next step is to publish uh, to the results in the rule database. Um, and the rule database is a it is a component developed outside the scope of this tool, so uh, therefore it is provided externally. So this way, when the user uh, pushes the publish button, the output will be stored as an RDF uh, graph in this rule database. The interface also provides the, uh, the user uh, with the, um, uh, the option to download the output uh, to, to, uh, or to publish the output as a JSON -LD, uh, in JSON LD format. So we have a demo here that uh, shows the automatic component of the tool. Uh, this demo shows how our best fine-tuned model is able to, to turn uh, the text regulation into a YAML tagged uh, automatically with the raise uh, uh, logical relationships. So the user, this is what we have. Uh, this is the interface the user has. So it is a text to YAML converter where the user is able to browse from his own uh, PC uh, to upload the file that it needs to be um, uh, the regulatory text that needs to be annotated with rays and turned into a machine readable YAML format. So we can see here uh, the, the model is reading the text, uh, recognizing the uh, statements in the test text and then uh, having them in a YAML format with this serial serialization logic. And then the, um, the user is able to uh, save that as you can see here, a full YAML format automatically generated from the text where the, the, the user can actually save that on his or her that desktop. Um, so thank you very much for, uh, for today's um, presentation and hopefully the tool has been uh, explained clearly. Um, and the, uh, these links, which are the different coding GitHub repositories for the different components of our automatic, uh, automatic technology. And we thank you very much. You can follow us on these social media uh, platforms. Thank you very much.